Hey guys, my name is Jesse Mew, and welcome to Whale Island. Thanks to the newest update to hit the beta branch of this game, we are now literally riding on the back of a giant whale. This update added so many new features and so many really cool genetics too. So I'm really looking forward to diving in and exploring all of them with you guys. I do want to let you know though, if you do decide to try this update out yourself, it is very, very buggy right now. I've already lost one of my poor tribes to the bugs and glitches, so I would recommend that you back up your save files just in case. We'll try to get through this with as few issues as possible, and you two, Anair and Cuckoo, are going to be our first brave explorers. So the Whale Island starts off as this kind of savanna biome, and slowly blends into what seems to be a birch forest. It's not a jungle, though it does have some plants that we would recognize from it, and those stinky fruits are going to be very helpful when we try to unlock some new traits. In fact, let's jump right into their mutation menu to see if we can pick out some of those new genetics ourselves. Unfortunately, not all of the traits have been added to the menu, Though based on what I've read so far, it sounds like they will be coming later. But the very first one on our list is the purse now, and this one has to be my favorite of all. It's basically like a little kitty face, and it allows them to heal the creatures around them, so we could train some true proper healers to join our tribe's stories. I think that's what has me so excited about this one. I can't wait to work that into all of the lore that we've built so far. We have a new horn slot too, the antenna, though unfortunately I think this is a little bit broken right now. It doesn't show up on their models when they have it, and while it's supposed to aid in weather prediction, so far I haven't noticed it changing anything about the game, so hopefully that'll be fixed soon. We also have the heat body. I haven't seen this one yet, but it sounds like it would be super helpful in the mountains. And then, of course, the wings, which I know so many of you have been waiting for. It takes up one of the paw slots, and I believe you do need two wings to actually be able to fly. But we have to invite animals with the wings into our tribe to unlock it in the mutation menu, so I haven't had the chance to play around with it yet. Hopefully today we'll be a bit more lucky in finding it. Now we only have access to one of the new tails, which is the tail fin. And because of that, I think I'm going to plop that straight into their mutation menus. While it might not be too helpful on Whale Island because we can't use the water, I feel like it's still a pretty fitting trait. We can be like a traveling pack of mermaids hitching a ride on the back of this giant whale. Now is there anything else that we need to be made aware of before we continue? The eyesight, of course. The eyesight always seems to be an issue in our starting pair. It looks like Cuckoo is actually hiding the antennas away in his inactive traits, so maybe there is a chance that we'll see that on some of our babies. I'm not sure how useful it's going to be while it still appears to be glitched, but I can't wait to see what it looks like once it is fixed. It's nice that they're adding in different horn genetics, things that are a little bit different from the ram horns and the antlers, so they do different things other than just giving us strength. Though strength is going to be important out here too, because Baraginas do like to spawn in these savanna grasses, so we want to make sure that our creatures are well prepared. Oh my goodness! Did somebody have a feast on these berries already? That is a lot of missing berries! I don't think anything should have spawned in here already, right? We like literally just landed on the island! There's no bunnies around. Oh great, we already have a big mystery on our hands. Well, I guess, Anair, you might as well plop down your first nest. At least we have a couple of berries on that shriveled up bush that we should hopefully be able to use for your children. Now, do you have our first fin tail? Nope, it looks like he inherited the medium tail instead. So no little mermaids for us just yet. Now just to help me tell these creatures apart, I am going to continue to use the big long list of names that you guys helped me make. 
I don't intend for this to be a full series while the game is still so glitchy, because I don't want to risk losing all of our stories to the bugs. But while we're hunting down all of these new genetics, we might as well continue the tradition. So welcome to our tribe, Rocco. The very first baby to be born on the Whale Island. We'll have your mother go ahead and scoop up as many berries as she can, since we know that something must be lurking out here. Something is looking to steal all of our food. We do have a root that Cuckoo could dig up instead, and now that they've buffed the digging paw a little bit, it'll be much more beneficial for us to focus on the roots. We gain one extra piece of food each time we dig up a pile. I think for the most part though, we're going to want to get out of the savanna as soon as possible. We already know from experience that the savannas are very low on food, so the sooner we get to these wide open spaces, the better. We even have little oak trees mixed in, so we could bring our cracker jaws over to those to pick up food. And for that matter, we have a brand new type of tree in the savanna too. I believe what this one does is it shades our creatures from the savanna heat. So if things started to get a little bit too hot for our creatures, and if they started to lose energy, we could have them rest for a while under the shade of the tree. Oh, and I don't think I mentioned the day counter either. This is one of those things that I wish we had from the very beginning. It would be so much fun to see exactly how many days we've spent on places like Adam's Quest. We've been at that one for quite a long time now. But we'll pack up our nurseries, and then we'll have Cuckoo start carving a pathway even further through the savannas. We don't want Anair to get too far away from her baby, while we don't have any bluebirds chasing the whale through the ocean. You never know what sort of dangers are going to pop up in the savanna. And yet another cactus has been stolen from. This is very, very mysterious. Whoever is stealing from the cactus must be quite hardy. I believe they did change it so creatures with high defense are able to pick from the cactus safely now. So I guess there's always a possibility that somebody with the big body could be lurking around these parts. But so far it seems so quiet. Oh, this is very, very strange. It makes me think that the Bandit Brothers must be playing tricks on us. I could definitely see them hitching a ride on the back of a whale too. This seems like the perfect island for the tricksters to really let their influence shine. But we might as well make our way over to this new tree. Maybe we'll find some special resources down there too. We do have a nice fresh berry bush to pick from over here. And it's just far enough away from the clearings that the bunnies haven't even noticed it yet. So scoop up all of those berries while you still have the chance, and then we'll skip the day again. And we'll have to make sure that your mate catches up with you too. Though luckily she's pretty darn good at running. Oh, excellent, we have a nursery up here. So we don't even have to make our own nest. That might be a pretty good spot for you guys to have another baby. We'll have Rocco explore the tree in the meantime and get it all prepared for his new little siblings to play underneath. And there's that buff that I was talking about. This animal is being cooled down by shadow. So by sticking them underneath the thick leaves of this tree, that should mean that the savanna heat shouldn't bother him quite so much. But go ahead and scoot into the new nursery, and then we'll bring Cuckoo to your side. If we put him right here, he should be able to dig up that extra root too. Just a little bit of extra food for this brand new baby. I'm very surprised by how quiet the savannas are. It always makes me nervous when we can't see any predators lurking about. But this little baby seems to have the stripes. Oh my goodness, where did you even find the stripes, little one? I guess that was from her father's inactive traits. The good news is that she's carrying the tail fin. So at least we're passing that along in some form. Ah, and there's another one of those glitches. The swimming tail is a little bit detached from our creature's bodies. Well, good thing she won't actually need that for swimming. It's all for show on Whale Island. But the next name on my list is North. 
so welcome to our tribe, little one. I'm sure you'll help us out quite a bit as we try to discover new resources. Maybe she could even go exploring with her father. Let's sniff around again, just in case. Yeah, I still don't see any new wandering creatures. No rogue males, no winged creatures fluttering through the skies. But that gives them a good opportunity to truly make a camp here. So let's start clearing out some of this grass so we'll be able to access our resources with a bit more ease. The savanna grass does grow back very quickly. Oh, but the rains are here. Well, that's a stroke of luck. Now we have plenty of time to gather up more food for even more babies. So maybe it is truly time to build our nursery here. We'll plop down another one of these nests, pick up some more of those berries, and we'll see if the rains give us the luck that we need for our first fin tail. Cross your fingers. What better time for our first mermaid baby to be born than right in the middle of a rainstorm? Oh, perfect. There we go. So this is our first brand new genetic. Isn't it just the coolest thing? I think it's one of my favorite tales so far, just based on looks alone. It's perfect for all of your aquatic tribes, of course. I bet this would look really cool with all of the water genes on one creature. But the next name on my list is Lapis. So welcome to the tribe, little one, as our very first mermaid of the family. Our little mermaid princess. Quite fitting that she has the crown of ram horns, too. It looks like all of the babies have managed to inherit that from their mother, so Animeum's presence is very strong in this tribe. Let's spend a little bit more time gathering food now. With so many babies, they must be eager to explore. In fact, Rocco is all grown up, so maybe he'll be the first one to venture out into the clearings. We'll have North follow suit because I do see those berry bushes. And I want to make sure that somebody is picking from them. Oh no. Oh no, that's a rogue male. Oh, that is not good. It doesn't look like he's even carrying any of the new genes either. So we don't want you getting to a nair. In fact, let's have Cuckoo breed with her now. So we won't even have to worry about him sticking around. There is no way that he was stealing our berries though. He would be very, very injured if he ate all of those. So somebody out here is still messing with our poor little tribe. Oh, and seeing all these poison berries reminds me. I don't think I talked about the extra tails, the ones that weren't in the mutation menu. There's one called the scorpion tail, and that one gives us the venomous skill so we can poison other creatures. But I have heard that it doesn't give them poison resistance so you would still want to keep them away from the poison berries. The second missing tail is the peacock tail, and that one only ever shows on male creatures. It gives them a buff in attractiveness, and I'm not really sure what that entails for the game. Though in my experience so far... Oh, wait a second, do we have two rogue males now? Well, that's not good. Well, in my experience so far, having the peacock tail makes them attract wild creatures a little more often. So it's probably a good thing that it only shows up on the males, because we certainly don't need to attract any more unwanted attention out here. We might actually want to pack up your nursery again and move, because there are way too many rogues in this area for comfort. Let's have Rocco keep lighting up that path, and if he makes it over to the stump, he might even be able to shed some light on this little nursery right here, with the two permanent nests next to so many berry bushes. Oh, it's right underneath one of the trees, too. Yeah, that's the perfect spot for us. So go ahead and pick up this nest, and we'll leave the shady trees behind us, because our mermaids are destined for greater things. Aside from the tails, I think there was one other snout genetic that wasn't in the mutation menu, and that would be the beak. The beak gives you a boost in digging and collecting, though it isn't so great at smelling. Oh, and our first little shadow joins us, clawing her way onto the back of the whale as it swims through the ocean. She must have been lost out here too. 
Oh, and she has one of those special genes, the scorpion tail. So we definitely want to spare a bit of our extra food to make sure that she'll join us. But at the same time, we want to keep her quite far away from all of our rogue male visitors. In fact, Rocco, if you wouldn't mind, maybe you could send him packing for us. That ought to send a pretty clear message. I think Mama Anera might need to do the same. She can jump way up here and ram him with her ram horns if he gets too close. And finally, you guys are out of the savannas. Let's have Anera do the honors jump high atop her throne so she can gaze across the land and make sure that nothing is going to harm her babies, of course. Looks like everything is clear and quiet out here, so we'll go ahead and skip the day. Watch as her first daughter grows. Oh, I love her stripes. She looks very striking. And she would be a good one to send out sneaking anyway, since her stripes will help her blend in with her surroundings. She's lucky that there isn't too much danger to be worried about, but I think she'd still be up for the scouting. Now, I think a new little love connection might already be blooming. It looks like Rocco and Lazla's immunity genes both match up quite well. So maybe we could use this pairing to try to keep the scorpion tail in our tribe. Thankfully, the blood clotting glitch has been fixed in this version. Previously, when you would try to mutate the normal blood clotting onto your babies, it wouldn't work no matter how many times you tried. But unfortunately, we don't have access to it right now. So instead, let's just play around with their appearances. We'll go ahead and plop the mask into her second slot, so we can try to weasel that into our tribe too. I think that's the only pattern that we're missing at the moment. So maybe you two could make your way up toward the nursery? We'll have Lazla settle down right next to North, and then get started on family number two. The poison family of all goes well. We might even try to pick some of the poison berries in the future, so we can unlock the toxic body for them too. Now Lapis, I have a special idea in mind for you. I would actually like your mother to hop off of her throne for the moment, because you're going to take up her place instead. When creatures are on top of stumps, they can actually call out to attract wild creatures. I'm not talking about you, little guy. The rogue males are not the ones we're looking for. But if anybody is wandering around the whale island, then if she sings long enough, she might just be able to lure them to her side. I feel like that would be a particularly fitting gift of our mermaids. Kind of like a siren song. So we'll see if she's successful when she has a little bit more energy to spare. Now, Cuckoo, you absolutely need to jump up here and make sure that this rogue male is leaving your family alone. Not only can you vanquish him entirely, but you have some tasty roots to dig up right underneath his skeleton. So I guess that just leaves North to do a little bit more snooping around. We have all of those tasty acorns beneath the tree but she's not quite suited to the task. So we'll have her scoot up here to take care of the berries on the next turn instead. And that should be the end of it. So let's go ahead and skip the day and see if hopefully this little baby is going to carry on the scorpion tail. Yes, excellent. So I'm sure this is one of those genes that we need to keep extra track of to make sure that we don't lose it. Most likely we'll need both slots to be filled with the scorpion tail before we'll actually see it on our babies. So this is a very good first step. Now the next name on my list is Sunny. So welcome to our tribe and we'll have to send you off for some acorn collecting so you can help us replenish our supplies. Oh, we should mark off our poison line with some different gemstones too. Maybe the orange ones? That looks very striking against her fur. And then we'll go ahead and change our little mermaids over to blue. Now as for you, little one, yet another stripy baby just like your sister, though this time he has the digging paw of his father, so he can snatch up all of the roots that North can't collect. This little baby's name will be Gruel. Welcome to our tribe. And now I think it's time for Lapis to attempt her very first siren song. So do we have anybody wandering nearby? 
It looks like things are still quite quiet. Aside from those bunnies... Oh no, the bunnies aren't fading already. Okay, we're gonna have to collect those berries before they steal every last one. But otherwise, nobody's in the area. So go ahead and sing your songs and see if you can entice anybody new to join our tribe. Unfortunately not. Her first attempt ended in failure. But that's okay. I'm sure eventually she's going to be able to sing loud enough to catch the attention of any wandering creatures. We'll have her stay high atop her throne until she finds a brand new friend to keep her company, and not of the bunny variety. You better get over here and take care of those bunnies for us, North. I think I even saw them stealing berries up here, too. Oh my goodness. I think Whale Island is actually Bunny Kingdom. This is where all of those pesky bunnies came from. Well, the good news is, we are super close to those stinky fruit trees. And then we can get to work unlocking the purse now next. So I think in the next episode, we'll send out some of our bravest explorers to do the job, and we'll see if they can't uncover yet another new gene. Like I said before, I hadn't intended for this to become a full series while the game is still so glitchy, but there is far too much for us to cover in just one episode, so I hope you guys are looking forward to playing with more of the new genetics. Let me know which one you guys are looking most forward to. You know it's the purr head for me, but I really hope we find someone with the wings before this is over. So for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye guys!